Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Ernesto from Overland Americas. And Thaisa. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight's show is totally normal. It's the distance edition. It's the only way we know how to do it. I'm in the Midwest, the Ross is in the Northeast, edition. and they are out in the Pacific Northwest. Correct, Seattle. Ooh. Perfect. So, see, I, didn't, I never want to give people's like location away, but like you are in your store, so that makes sense. Here's so. the GPS <laughs> coordinates of where our guests are currently sitting. You make that joke. We've done shows like that before. Oh, where no, people have dropped I, I, coordinates I, to me and been like, I'm here right I now. Know. When can but we But the talk? thing is when we really, like, we're streaming theoretically on YouTube now, but when we recorded those shows, those people had already left by the time that those podcasts landed in people's ears. Um, hey, funny is we are live tonight. Wow. <laughs> good for us. I am happy that was, for us. Way to, way to joke it out there into existence, <laughs> Ross. <laughs> yeah. Well, if only, uh, you know, if only things manifested like that in, uh, in actuality. But Yep. I just uh, saw you, the note you added. This is our last show of 23, guys. Yeah. So I would like to thank you, Chris, for everything that you have done this year. <laughs> it has really carried the show, uh, and there would be no show without you. I'd like to thank our guests for being here as we say goodbye to this year and thank you to everybody for listening. This is that means I'm getting a pay raise, right? Um, as you could, uh, you could well, double you, my current salary. I, I could, I could. You are it's hard to you, double zero. You're, you're also CEO, <laughs> CFO, and COO, so you could double your own salary, pay yeah, yourself dividends not. and stock options, and and we uh, we still have managed to not go bankrupt. It's amazing. It's true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, thank you everybody for for being with us for another year. This is year three. Okay. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats. It, it it is weird that we started this right before the pandemic hit, and then yeah. just kind of kept flowing with it because we were already doing it video anyway. And so all yep. the guests were like, "Oh yeah, cool. We're fine with video conferencing now." It was the weird funnest... to watch the adequacy of Zoom <laughs> increase with people. It was it was weird to watch people who had been podcasting before us learn to podcast over streaming. The only way we know how to do it. <laughs> Which is, as you always say, is the only way we know how to record the show because three years later, we still have never been in the same facility. I so, told them that earlier. <laughs> yep, yep. But no, it, it, it's it's amazing what uh, what you and we have, you know, have, have done and... Uh, and yeah, Speaking yeah, of being speakers. physically in the same space, you're physically holding something right now? I'm physically, well, yeah, this in my most <laughs> professional Doug DeMiro voice is the Chapman Manufacturing 5575 Precision Screwdriver Set, which I am chewing on my tongue as I said that. Um, but Joel at Chapman Manufacturing, which incidentally is probably the closest to me of anybody that we've spoken to or <laughs> recorded with as a consequence or a result of the show reached out and wanted to talk to you and me about toolkits. And they were kind enough to send over this beautiful. Um, Dude, it's actually really pretty on the it inside. Is, like I, <laughs> man, I am one of those people who perpetually buys like the $8 Amazon special, like 156 piece toolkits because I use them. I beat the shit out of my throne out. Um, but this is like, this is a nice toolkit that they sent over, and so uh, and, and it's I have weird because they're like local to me. Yeah, exactly. Did they? And my favorite part is they they shipped it to you. Like you could have gone and picked should, it up, dude. It would have cost them less <laughs> to meet me halfway, or for exactly. me to just drive over there. Like they're in Connecticut. They've been in Connecticut, I think, since they were founded, but. Yeah, shout out to Chapman Manufacturing and, and Joel. And, and uh, inside of the kit was there's a screwdriver handle that has an extension and then like, like 20 different None of the stuff that I purchase with normalcy has this kind of like care taken to it. Um, I'm not going to lie, dude. It When I opened it and looked at it, I was like, oh, this is exactly like my, gran like my grandfather's is, stuff that has lasted... 60 yeah. plus years yeah. kind of kind I, um, of quality i was like ooh, 
Wow. I worked with my family's manufacturing company for a while after college and obviously was around it my entire life prior. And yeah, this is consistent with the stuff that lasted from the 50s and the 60s and like that era of, you know, like the the thriving New England manufacturing. Um, but it's awesome to see if they're still doing it. And thank you, Joel, for sending it over in podcast green. I was um, say, yeah, he did get it pretty on brand for the color scheme. Thanks, Joel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, awesome stuff. And uh, I have plenty of things I can subject it to. And hopefully... And it, speak, no, speaking no, of subjected no. to, oh, you're Jesus. being subjected to a massive SUV right now? Or a massive truck? No, it has since left. But I spent a week with the GMC 2500 AT4X AEV, which is not a mouthful at all. Uh, it is... 200 what did i write it up as hold on please hold i the, the thing i published today i should probably know the actual specifications i on. i know it's huge um the the truck is 252 inches long which for reference my lexus gx is 191 inches long before the shit that i put on it which well, means my it is Suburban 60. 220 inches long. Like this is 30 like inches longer than a suburban. My 05 Avalanche, which is a long vehicle, was 223. So exactly. this is 252 inches long. But more concerningly, it is 81.9 inches wide, which is as wide as a Hummer. And it is 82.6 inches tall. Uh, and worse, it is 8,600 pounds. That's like Hummer EV weight comparisons. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the story is AEV takes the existing 2500 HD Sierra and then puts their, you know, metal armor all over the thing. And subsequently, you have a vehicle that is so tall that uh, that my head is... I'm five foot nine. Like, if we want to play the Ron DeSantis game, I'm five foot ten when I wear our boots. <laughs> and <laughs> um, the non political show. Got it. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got to go out with a bang here. But my head was lower than the top of the hood. And my like chin area was about where the top of the tailgate is. On I'm sharing ground. your garage picture now. And yeah, and, I, and I, I I backed it into my garage, which I, I do admit my garage is tiny, but my Dude. wife's CX-5, which is a, it's like a midsize, you know, crossover fits in with no problem. And this thing, not only did this barely get into my garage, but I had to walk all the way around to take these pictures. Like I couldn't squeeze between the you know the the sides of the bed and the actual you couldn't have wedged your body garage. through the gap <laughs> at the top there's um, a nice step on this bedside dude maybe when i was you know my like middle school weight but yoga ross could have fit through that hole there are, there's no such thing as yoga ross <laughs> 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 but uh but yeah no it's um the the at4x av is amazing for what it is and it is an achievement i i'll back up i'll preface this by saying i didn't take it off road the people that i know that did take it off road said it is amazing off road with the caveat of for what it is there is whether it's Wheel, lockers or wheelbase tires. is great yeah yeah wheelbase yeah. and lockers are are great wheelbase but... lockers tires armor all of that awesome can get you places that otherwise you might not get a truck of this size but 8600 pounds is and the the width are non-starters on like a Got sane it. person's brain um and this was the first time i've been riding atvs for 20 years as of uh, two weeks from when this podcast will come out. This is the first time that I was that my senses got the better of me and I actually stood on the side of the quad 
and held the brake and walked it down the ramp because I thought it was going to roll over backwards because of how really? tall this thing is. Yeah. Okay. So good truck though. Good Sweet. Truck. Yeah. Um, um, you also gave the Polaris back. Uh, yeah. The pictures that are, that are here, the, uh, the Scrambler XP 1000 S went, went back to the, uh, back, back to the manufacturer which considering it was a 2022 model, it probably should have done a long time ago. But yeah, we, uh, we say goodbye to the players. Great quad. Um, probably nothing better in the sport 4x4 space. But, you know, considering it's $19,000 new, there shouldn't really be anything better than the sport <laughs> 4x4 so space. Expensive. So expensive. And all ATVs, all UTVs, you can option a Polaris Expedition to like 65 grand, and they will factory install a rooftop tent for you. But it's, it's very expensive. Um, and the part of the reason behind putting it in the back of this 2500 is that the 55 inch width means it doesn't actually fit in a normal pickup like it wouldn't even come close to fitting into the back of a colorado so hence the trailers and that you've always had it in hence the trailers hence the full size and the hds that i've been carrying it in since they loaned it to me and another casual thank you to players for lending it to me um yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about the popos in the new year. Sweet. Two more things, and then I'm done. Yeah, I would say you got a lot tonight, dude. I do have a lot tonight. <laughs> well, I got lot, nothing going on. <laughs> we've had we've had some guests recently where we didn't really talk about our own shit, and I've been just like hoarding. Um, first things first, BFG. Thank you, BFG, for sending over tires, which are currently sitting in my garage, and which, um the opposite of a shout out to the FedEx guy who started stacking them in front of my front door instead of the garage, which I don't know what kind of sensibility didn't happen there. Uh, but BFG, um, same company as Michelin, which sent Chris the tires on the Suburban. Um, they graciously sent over a set of 34 by 10 and a half KO2s. So... We'll see how those compare to the <laughs> traditional 285s. I mean, 34 by 10 and a half is what most people consider a pizza cutter, like a skinny, tall, skinny. Um, and their D load rating versus like the traditional 285 7017s that I currently have in my truck. And uh, okay. yeah, it should be different. They're a little bit taller, a little bit narrower, and a load rating lighter and a couple pounds lighter. So it should be very like same price tire to tire, you know, comparable yep. for what people would shop. So we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge after they're on the truck and uh, I'm getting tired of talking. You, I say you don't normally talk this much on the show, but no, I, I, I usually talk this much during like <laughs> why we, meetings. That's why we bring but, guests. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, last but not least, RC four wheel drive, um, Luke and Mike, I've been working with them. They sent over uh, a one-tenth scale RC crawler. It's called the uh, C2X. Yeah, C2X, not CX days, C2X. So it's technically what they call a, a competition level scale crawler. Um, it has like locking is it, differentials and is it based on a Toyota Ute? Like it is based on a like 19. Oh God. I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it is in fact Toyota based and okay. like the decals that come with the kit are all Toyota. Like the tricolor theme. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a one ten scale crawler. Um, and it is pretty fucking awesome. Um, there were a couple hiccups with it. Uh, one of them was completely my own doing, which entailed playing with the dials on the on the radio and entirely fucking myself because I just was like, 
turning things <laughs> hoping that the best would come from it um and then the other the the screw for the steering arm fell out of the where the arm meets the servo and vanished into the grass abyss this was as i you need started a magnet as i started moving it the second time that i played with it so that was not awesome um but yeah we're going to do some more rc stuff on the show because it's yeah, we 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 had that I'm going to, yes. We had that joke when we had Doug on the show, and I was like, I bought a Defender. <laughs> right. It's, it's a 118th scale RC. Um, but it's everything we love about the hobby and the enthusiast side of things, barring ex like world exploration um, and you know the technicality and the capability in your house or backyard or like local park. Um, yep. There's, yeah, I feel so, like it's a number of guys who run them in what, in what they consider their off season. Like if they're not going to go out and do their full size rigs and camp or whatever, like they'll play with the RC yeah. stuff or, or, or there's some if, guys that like, just bring it with them. And when they get to camp, then they get out the oh, RC stuff and they keep doing the same stuff. Dude, the guys that I go riding up North and the in Maine and New Hampshire and all that stuff, like one of the guys brings his like psycho death mas machine nitro RC with him. And like we get back to camp, everybody pours a drink, and then you just hear ning 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 ning. I'm just like, oh god, watch your feet, like stand on the fucking yeah. bench, you know. But uh, I did on that Moab trip. I did watch a guy blast one of those Traxxas trophy trucks with lights on it into like yes. a log that he didn't, he couldn't see. I swear it hit it like <laughs> forty or fifty miles an hour and just yeah. cartwheeled for yeah. a really long way. It's and then he was just like, oh, I'll just run it backwards. It'll be fine. It's crazy. I'm sure all of us, and in, this includes people listening, have played with RCs at some point in their lives or slot cars or something like that. And I like I like replicating obstacles that I've not been able to get up in my truck or my quad and doing it with something that if it rolls over, there's no actual consequence. But at the same time, you can spend less or the same money and do 60 miles per hour and if it crashes into something, so it'd be. Sweet. But yeah, thanks again, guys. Yeah. Look at Mike. Um, That's awesome. A couple of things just here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to disable the notifications because um, this. You're good. It, it is barely coming through. Okay. I've also I checked my worry. phone every time. So it, it, it's, it's a normal uh, fixture of the show. I think but. we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the heat, the heater is cooking our legs. So I just need to clean it down a little. Please, bit. you're good. Caribbean, <laughs> uh, that it's hot in a garage. It's hot. Yeah. How how cold is it there? I think today, it's, today. it's also kind of like fifties. Wasn't yeah. that cold? Oh, that's yeah. not, it's warmer than it is here. Yeah, yeah. You're I, I, you're now experiencing the winter that I had, and it was sixty yeah. degrees here today, Ross. Which my Coworker out in Denver was like, it's been 60s in Denver for the last two days. I was like, it's December in Denver. It should not be 60. Like, that's. Yeah, but wrong. December in Denver, depending on which side of Denver you're on, like, I was talking to my best friend. And he said the same thing. He was like, it snowed, then it was 60. Yeah. They'll probably get three feet of snow in like a, within the next two weeks. Yep. Um, and then they'll also, complain about all the people who don't know how to drive in it. Never, ever buy a $30 space heater from Lowe's. And that's where I end my okay irateness on that subject. So leave us with the cliffhanger there. No cliffhanger, just just don't. I feel like there was about to be a Family Guy segment of you know what grinds my gears, like yeah, you no know grinds my gears when something <laughs> feels and looks like it's going to light everything in your garage on fire, but it barely can heat up your gloves. That's there it. you go. That's that's my spiel. Well. Ernesto and Tasia, we're very excited to have you join us tonight. We Likewise. we typically let our guests introduce themselves. The elevator pitch, as you would. How, how would you guys describe yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> Nature enthusiast. Nature enthusiast. Nature okay. Enthusiast. Okay. I mean, 
if if our listeners haven't gone to the Overland the Americas Instagram page yet, it is a lot of nature. It is it's lovely. Still, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Did the nature enthusiasm preclude the off road side of your adventures, or were you off roaders and then decided that nature was your prerogative? Nature led led to what we do now. Just okay. want to get out there and experience, you know, the outdoors a little closer. We like the remote trails and both hiking and then getting to those hikes. So yeah. off roading mm -hmm. fun yeah. combo. Yeah, it, it, there are things I grew up uh, in Venezuela uh, and grew up around Toyotas. Um, so I kind of never made, no thought anything of it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once I was here in the States, I was like, yeah, these are, these are nice. So. <laughs> these are nice. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I, I love, I love Toyotas, especially like older ones. Says the That's guy perfect. sitting in yeah. front of a, <laughs> a, a truck that most people listening to this show would literally drill over. So how did your love... <laughs> First of all... Oh, Chris, I'm about to do the thing that I always do, which is like, here's 40 questions. I'm going to bombard you. Yeah. Exactly. Try um, to limit it to one, homie. Let him try. Him, give him... I'm going to try. <laughs> how did your love of the outdoors and love of exploring turn into seeing the world via four by four. No. Did I, is that good, Chris? Did I do good on that one? Gosh, I, I feel like, well, I feel like I wasn't really the one that was like, yeah, let's do long extended travel in a car. That wasn't necessarily <laughs> my starting point. Cause you know, like family road trips, like, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but again, because we love um, kind of the off the beaten track stuff and getting remote, that just kind of made sense. And it was Nesto's idea to do some long term travel um, exploring. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I enjoyed my family road trips when I was a kid uh, and, uh, you know, pretty rough 60 series Land Cruiser. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I had done some back backpacking and I really wanted to go to uh, South America, mm -hmm. but I thought that maybe, uh, you know, going with a backpack, it wasn't the way to do it. So I started, I started looking at the, and this is, man, we're talking, this is going to reveal our ages. Don't ask. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm in my forties. You're good. Right. Uh, and what? I think we started talking about this in 2008. That was when we okay. started about like doing a trip mm -hmm. down to uh, South America. Pretty Where much were you when discussion started? Seattle. Okay. Yeah. yeah Seattle we, and OA is a good place. That's a good place to be. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it took a long time for us to get ready. Uh, first, you know, you talk about it a lot to friends and family. For to, many years. For many years. Yeah. <laughs> To the point where they just basically don't believe you anymore. <laughs> Not to scare you, it's gonna happen. but it's never gonna happen. we're about to do this. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, many things need to happen. We, at least what we, a lot of people like Richard Nashley, for example, I mean, they're, they just, you know, hit the, hit the road. That's, you know, incredible. Uh, we, we saved for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And built a vehicle. Um, took a long time redoing it. Get the, you know, get the courage to actually take the plunge. I think that that's probably one of the most difficult decisions. So anyway. Was um, yeah. the first vehicle the forerunner? For the trip, yeah. For this kind of stuff, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about the Forerunner. The Forerunner. So at the time, we were looking for a vehicle and um, different than today. I wasn't like very mechanically inclined. Um, and I really wanted us to enjoy the trip rather than having to work on cars along the way. 
Yeah. Um, I know that that's often part of the adventure, but I'm the, like... The best part of adventuring and the automotive experience is when you're using things the way they're meant to be used. Yeah. At so, least that's what a same yeah. person... Yeah, I mean... We believe in good gear. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely like to be prepared. Uh, so let's say that, but yeah. uh, Both and, and, not, Boy Scout. and not like people, and not like people that leave on vehicles that aren't necessarily all, all kitted out, iron prepared, right? But it, just different approaches. That's what I'm trying to say. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think we went way overboard uh, with like building the truck. At the time, was like fairly new. I. I swear that uh, at the time, or at least I didn't know a lot of people, but in 2008, um, there, there weren't that many people out there were like uh, built trucks. So uh, there weren't that many resources. Yeah, certainly um, not built for others. And, no. Yeah. And like a rooftop tent, everyone at that time um, was like, what is that? And we mm. had a, we really yeah. liked our home yeah, yeah. tent. Like, and- so you take your tent and you put it on your roof rack? Yeah. So a lot of people is just like, that's a big uh, storage box. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Now they're everywhere. They're such an awesome thing to have. Yeah. So the, so, so the Forerunner um, was an early, was it a trail or was it a? It was a trail edition, yeah. Okay. It was a trail edition in 2012, oh, but it get, you know, best. as I said, it's our planet. The best wheels ever offered on it. any <laughs> Toyota. Uh, yeah. Guys, I've tried to go deep on Instagram. Sorry. Oh wow, that is <laughs> great. Great. This brings like that amazing. That's that is huge. Yeah. Who's responsible for the astrophotography? Me. Impressed. Very good. Oh, thank it's you. By Milky Way. That is incredible. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can really go down a rabbit hole here. <laughs> it's like the, uh, talking <laughs> about the, the truck and what led us to it. Um, we talked about. We thought about like getting a van first. Um, I don't know. Tons of friends here, you know, were uh, going out to the mountains with like Vanagons. And I thought, oh, maybe we'll do that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, some of the people that inspired us um, traveled back in the day in Vanagons. So I thought, but I grew up with Toyotas and, you know, I went yep. to a few mechanics and I asked, what are the vehicles that you work on the least? They said Toyotas. It's like, all right, go with that. Well, that's um, consistent with a lot of what our show exists to talk mm-hmm. about. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, no, Chris has owned at least five Toyota 4x4s, and I've owned at least five Toyota 4x4s. So yeah, we're all in the same camping mentality here. <laughs> How does the uh, the Mercedes van come into all of this? And also, can you pronounce its name? The um, oh, the Vario? Is that right? The Variosaurus? Yes. Variosaurus. Is that how you say it? Variosaurus? <laughs> okay. There might have been a day drinking decision on purchasing that thing on my birthday. <laughs> oh, purchasing and naming or, or just? Oh, purchasing. Okay. Well, I mean, that's that you could do worse after day drinking. I'd, yeah. I'd yeah. Have so that no one. Experience um, with um, saying. Uh, loud. After we returned from our trip, I uh, started importing uh, 75 series Land Cruisers, like the, the troop carrier uh, wheelbase. Mm-hmm. And I had a customer inquire about a very specific model. It wasn't a 75 that he wanted, but a 73. Um, and we had made friends from you know different parts of the world. So I just put the word out uh, and I asked my friend Salim in Oman to help me try to find one of these 73 series, uh, you know, double locked. Uh, oh, okay. Can you find it, me like, one? I just, I, I didn't know. I'm, I consider I myself <laughs> like reasonably, you know, yeah. like thorough in Land Cruisers, but 73 yeah. is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my friend, uh, he's really into cars. Uh, and he showed me this one, um, and I, you know, I basically, I, I, I humored him. I was like, yeah, let me see it. And, um, well, the story was fantastic, and I showed it to Thaisa. I was like, look at this thing. This is so cool. 
uh, we had met many years ago a Dutch couple in Guatemala, and they had one like that, you know, that van. And Thais is like, why don't we have one like these? You know, not like that, but... <laughs> And I was just like, it's, uh, it's giant. Yeah, it's we can do a lot of stuff. Anyway, so um, you know, as I, as Tasa said, maybe we just started having some drinks, and then, as and, you uh, do, as, as you do, yeah. And it turned into reality. Yeah, and uh, there it is. But the cool thing about that barrio is um, we got it with only eighteen hundred kilometers in it, like basically new, but it's from two thousand twelve. And what? it used to, yeah, and it used to be, uh, it, it was a, a military vehicle that was assigned to the Sultan's palace. So it was just pretty much sitting in a palace. Uh, yeah. Hardly, barely used. Yeah, barely, yeah. The story is that it actually transported flowers. Or boxes or whatever, something. parcel. It has like white carpeting and it has like this beautiful wood paneling and these like roll up security doors. Like, anyway, it's lovely. Yeah, like mid, mid, Middle Eastern inlay. It's pretty neat. Fancy. Beautiful. This thing is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, yeah. Is it front-wheel drive? It is uh, no, uh, uh, rear. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, it's a uh, Dooley's, and it has a four-liter engine. Um, it's, it's known as the million-mile, uh, oh, mi million-kilometer engine. It's, it's, it's badass. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's awesome. We love it. So do we want to do stories? Oh my gosh. Can we can we <laughs> tap into uh can we pivot a little bit and tap into that? So uh so you've been all over the place. Would you like to discuss uh some of your favorite places first to to start this off? That is very difficult. And it's always an unfair, you know, like when we unfair <laughs> answer, um, because there are so many amazing places. And I guess it's just really what we happen to remember now. Sure. Um, but and I think there are different things. Uh, yeah. I you're mean, allowed like, to change your answers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think we, we gravitate uh, towards the mountains. So that's okay. where we're are happy right like hiking uh, trails up you know beautiful views mm -hmm. vistas uh not that we don't enjoy the coast but like um we we usually spend very little time in those places so i would say like maybe chile uh it's you know raw beauty uh i never been to alaska we have never been to alaska but people compare to uh what alaska mm -hmm. looks like just Glaciers upon glaciers, amazing lakes and hikes and mountains and, you know. Opposite sides of the equator. Just exactly, yeah. Uh, it's, it's absolutely stunning. Um, but then there are, there are other places that are favorites for other reasons, like people, right? Brazil, Colombia, Mexico. Uh, we felt that people were the warmest in those mm -hmm. places. And it, it, it really carves a very special place in, 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 you know, in our hearts. Uh, just like it's really cool. Um, but I mean, routes, uh, of the four by four routes, I probably did some of the most. And I'm not a super, of, you know, technical off road dude. He waited until I had to go home for a little while to do the hardcore stuff without. <laughs> well, otherwise, it would have, you know, would have been maybe, I don't know. That's how you said, no, we're not doing it. I don't know. I'm pretty but, <laughs> So this there is. Venezuela. He yeah, often does think that that's a road, and it's not. Let's just be okay. <laughs> yeah, we we did a very, uh, yeah, very cool uh, route, a five day route between the Venezuelan Brazilian uh, border. Um, very gnarly. I mean, was that that you mentioned a road that you had to go like back across or something because it didn't work out? Yeah. Was that that? It, yeah. I'm not the yeah man i mean that's what i'm saying so many stories so <laughs> Venezuela, we wanted to finish the trip in venezuela and ship out of venezuela that's where i'm from right but the problem there was like i have dual citizenship and i wasn't allowed uh by by the law you know venezuelan to 
enter the country with a foreign vehicle unless I imported the vehicle permanently. And I was not huh. interested in that because, you know, we were going to ship it back to the United States. So I tried, I, I spent a whole, yeah, that's, yeah. I spent a whole month um, trying to get the paperwork or, you know, a way to get deep into the, the you know, the, the main, the main, yeah. yeah. So this, this, this literally is between that road right between there, the border delineates the border between Venezuela and Brazil. Well, that, um, that's the border that right there. Yeah. That I is, think that, <laughs> yeah, that's that much would, okay. prettier than the border between Canada and New York uh, and the States. <laughs> and I basically had a binder full of paperwork to import a forerunner from Canada to the U S and it's the same exact truck. So yeah, I, I feel your pain. Yeah. So, uh, but, but yeah, that was incredible. So that's around that same, same region. Some of the most yeah. stunning, uh, national, uh, uh, national parks or natural landscapes you're going to see. The picture that's on the screen right now for people that can see it is thanks so much for sharing this one again i wasn't there this time but mm -hmm. this is in the area if you've ever seen the star <laughs> movie um up like the, the animated movie oh yeah up. this is not where sad at all definitely not oh a, gosh it was don't. but this is where it was based in you know those big tapuis and mm -hmm. uh, plateaus with the clouds that's that's yeah. where it's supposedly based yeah this is a 121 Fire. kilometer uh hike that i did like round trip it's uh, uh yeah and you said it it's was amazing shit. that's 75 miles that is it yeah so okay, you had to do the math <laughs> I, I, we did it over google search i'm not good at converting yeah. we, we did it over we did it over seven days but i was um uh, the, it's a national park so you actually have to hire local uh indigenous people that will bring you there right it's 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 the law you have to do um and I sometimes struggle with that when it's like, you know, you got to earn it. You got to put your backpack and do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty stubborn and, and did that. And my knees were not, you know, taken. My knees are hurting just listening. <laughs> it was really bad. I think when I returned, my knees were swollen. Um, oh, my. It, I mean, worth it. I will do it again. But this time I'll hire the, the, the guys. I tried to um, find more of the Astro stuff for you, Russ. Thank you. I... I, think, I mean, this is really pixelated. Uh, that was a very difficult shot to take. Um, there's a lot of editing going on for sure. What do you looks amazing. shoot with for your? Uh, so at the time, I was using with a Nikon uh, D10, uh, okay. A8, uh, A10, sorry. And uh, right now, recently, I got a, a Z8. Nice. It's the latest um, mirrorless. Um, okay. Nikon. Is that what Larry shoots with, or is he Canon? He's Canon, dude. He's Canon, right? Okay. I'm just, yeah. yeah. I'm going to get a side message later with Larry. He's me like, seriously? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a Canon ambassador. Like, he All my is. shit's Canon, too. <laughs> I, I just, I, I can't, I just, as much as I try, I can't keep them separate. Like, my brain just, anyways, uh, what is, so you, you've done some adventures that people would spend their lives aspiring to. What, is, uh, what does 2024 look like for you? We don't know. Uh, we're doing, we know that we're going to go back to Europe. Uh, we left our troopy there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be uh, driving south and, and ship to Morocco. Okay. That, that's really is that, that's all we know uh, for certain right then there's timelines that you can have in europe yeah. so there's like a three month yeah we kind right. of have to deal with the amount of time where we can be in places and of course we chase yep. the sun or the temperature and the sun so morocco is kind of our next, our yeah. next step and oh, i see the photo of our friends so richard and ashley who's been on your show before too <laughs> they happen to be traveling around in the they same are. yeah so yeah they're coming up on you know how SNL does like the the five times like 
being on <laughs> SNL hosting That's five funny. times is like a big thing. Like Richard Nashley are coming up on five times. Um, yeah, they, they they just didn't want to go, so I'm sure they would be happy to lend a uh, an ear for what to do, where to go, how to. Oh, we're going there with them. Oh, with them. Oh, yeah. Well, they're what close. Kind of, they yeah. were close to the border, right? Like recently, so like yeah. span the border and stuff. So there's already that influence. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if we. Okay. Well, I'm putting putting them in the in the spotlight, <laughs> meaning like <laughs> calling out. <laughs> Well, but, uh, and that's that's got to be the kind of thing where, like, once you find, I'm sure you have run into all kinds of people when you travel, but like finding people that I don't know vibes the right word, but like vibe well with you, like connect your s- style of traveling, your uh, objectives that you have to your trip. If they're the same, that's got to feel great when you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's yeah. super special. I mean, it's true that there's yeah. definitely rhythms and yeah. people that. You- love to you know yeah travel yeah. With. yeah we you kind of had some of like in a number for all the people that we met throughout our, our trip okay. kind of we were trying to keep track in the beginning <clears throat> of years ago we did central and south america uh and mexico um of like fellow travelers that we've met many times you have handles and websites and whatever mm-hmm. and we would put it on our website so we would remember also <laughs> but it was something like <laughs> 300 couples granted we were on the road for almost three years but like something like 300 couples Mm -hmm. at least in the pan-american highway because that's such a well-trodden kind of overland extended travel Mm -hmm. so anyway we met so many fabulous people from all over the world it was super special yeah and uh with rich and ashley it's like kind of a love story i guess because we met them in (laughs) we met them in 2013 um and what? we were talking about going on this trip. They were talking about going on their trip, right? And yeah, uh, yeah I mean, he's like, I have a pickup truck. It doesn't have an engine in it. You know, we're leaving in three months. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, this dude is crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they call the thing? Is that thing called Little Red or something? Yeah, yeah Little, little Red's the little one. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> now they're in full-size land with the, with the Tundra. It's so big. <laughs> yeah. So nice to be there. Thank you. <laughs> They host us every night. That was uh, that was one of the things. They, the last time we talked to them, they were like, "It's so nice to actually have people come to our vehicle now." <laughs> so, instead of guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we met them in uh, 2013, and uh, yeah, we were getting ready. They were getting ready. Uh, we we met them online, and then we drove. And Richard said, "Like, why don't you stop by for a beer or whatever." So we were where, doing a loop. Where was that? Where where was that? Was in Vancouver. Uh, we were doing a loop. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Yeah, we were doing a loop of the you know the the Rockies, the Canadian Rockies. Mm-hmm. That's when we met them for the first time, and uh, man, I, we hit it. We, we hit it off. Yeah. I guess. Totally online dated. Yeah. <laughs> totally online dated. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, Couple I have to say, retreat. yeah. <laughs> have similar interests like cultural travel mm. uh, vehicles but also um i feel i think that we can say this um i they're a huge inspiration right for many reasons um uh, they're like very very close friends but like i think that you know it's it's, it's a really nice uh, friendship yeah we got yeah you know the all, a lot of the travelers that you kind of get hooked and like, no matter what, they just try to figure it out. And it's usually not, it's kind of messy. You know, you have to figure out online work or savings and sac- different sacrifices and, you know, living situations and hustling. And then you see those friends that for a long time continue this type of nomadic life, I guess, uh, overlanding and, you know, exploring. Um, and it's inspirational because it's you're living your adventure. I guess it sounds cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, yeah, that was in that was in Canada. The other the other one, the two trucks was in Nevada. Yep. Uh, I what mean, elevation within... is the picture we're looking at. Oh, you know, I don't remember. Uh, but this is uh, very a, high a, up there. It's, it's like altitude is in here. altitude here isn't too too crazy. This is like going up a trail, uh, Near Bam. Yeah. Uh, Moraine Lake, mm-hmm. I, and I forget the name of this this, this trail. It's like Sentinel Pass or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah. which it's probably 
triple the hype. Most people are like, oh yeah, it's just a normal hike. <laughs> but no, no, I, I, I honestly, I don't think this one's that well. I may, I may. It be looks. Wrong. It. I mean, it is still like a good hike. But I don't know the elevation. But yeah. The top. But there's bears. Yeah. There's Marvel. bears. Uh-huh. I don't like the bears. Yeah. Um, not that, that, but there's bears is always like. Hmm. My my 15 year old came home with a phrase the other day. It was like if it was if it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lay down. If it's white, say good night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, yep, yeah. yeah. Like I didn't expect that out of the 15 year old. That felt like it was too true. Like I was like, this is supposed to be more sarcastic and annoying. But I was, think it was that- accurate. Is the You're like oh, Reddit right? especial? <laughs> it seems it seems like a dad joke that just got passed around for actual like legit reasons. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, sorry. So we, we've talked about a lot of good, and I don't want to be the the massive Debbie Downer here, but I have to throw it out there. So, uh, do you want to touch on very briefly your your worst trip or or a time when things just went completely wrong or a place you'll never go back to yeah i think i mean not venezuela with your car since they want to keep it uh-huh. should probably <laughs> do that <laughs> Um, so, so I would imagine that is maybe coming from the safety, uh, or, you know, being rude or difficult to travel. Uh, I mean, we're going to be, you know, I mean, we always are pretty honest, but I think that two things we had going for us is like, we both, uh, speak Spanish mm-hmm. okay. so that really facilitated a lot of stuff. We also had a very, very, very slow pace. And I think that that also helps helps you um, situational awareness. Yeah, it helps you kind of be more in the in the moment and and you know be able to um, like feel out the place, and yeah, the space, the people. Yeah, in the times that we didn't because we were rushing, that's when shit happened. Really? Uh, yeah, like. There's like flooding in Cabo and Cabo San Lucas is like super touristy. It's like one of the most touristy spots we had driven through after like a few months on the road. Mm-hmm. We had like a, a, what is it called? The um, trasheroo type yeah, backpack yeah, yeah. wheel, you know, and Hang we actually had, yeah. And we parked in a place at night. There was flooding. We had maybe had some beers and we we're staying with friends and like, just, you know, usually we're camping in wild spots, but we were in a city and we had valuable stuff in the treasure, like rookies and it got stolen stuff like that, oh. where you're just like, yeah, we kind of asked for it. I thought mm-hmm. 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 just uh, a learning opportunity. You learned like it's yeah. Yeah. Cabo it, in a Cabo, huh? Yeah. In a touristy place, you know, we try to a degree to avoid those. I mean, there's places that are very touristy that are still worth going. Uh, it's just, to hit, you know, before going to those places, it's probably best just to go on the low season, um, just to avoid the crowds. And, you know, it's obviously you're more exposed when, when there's a bunch of people around. Mm-hmm. And pro tip, only put trash in your trash room. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a rear tire carrier first. I don't have that on the Suburban. Yeah. Now, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Um, I think that... It, Hands down, Mexico will be the place where you're going to be uh, stopped by by police the most and, you know, trying to get bribes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's annoying. Uh, but, you know, th- there's a point where, like, you basically, and this is how, this is coming from uh, the Richard Nashley uh, book, right? It's like, you just have to wait it out. Wait it out and, you know, they have things to do. Mm-hmm. So you know, uh, they are outside in the heat. You're inside, you know, chilling in so. your car. So if you wait long enough, eventually they move on. Yeah, yeah. They, they get tired. In your <laughs> like, yes and like, yes no. Do <laughs> <laughs> some talking and the bullshitting and some yeah. frustration in between. But... Yeah, yeah. Does the can there become a magical language barrier there? I feel like when they saw Ernesto physically, like. Yeah. The, 
they assume that he spoke Spanish. So, I mean, I guess you could have faked speaking English and pretend. Yeah, no. But, we I mean, know. obviously. <laughs> Norwegian. Sorry. That's one way yeah. to go about it. Yep. So, so here's, here's how, really quick, how it probably went down. We're driving a car that doesn't exist in Mexico, has you know, a bunch of gear outside and four lights. Super lights. dark tinted windows, and apparently. So they couldn't see, so they pull you over. The first thing that they see is a brown dude. And they're like, oh, they have to reassess their game again. And it's oh. like, well, you know, I speak Spanish. And they're like, thrown off. And then they look at Thaisa and it's just like, what's going on? Right. And Thaisa just smiles. And the guy's like, oh, okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you I, can I, confirm that regardless of borders, a smile befits a smile and like always. the best thing you can possibly do in any kind of situation where the first impression is the most important is yeah. be friendly. That's it. Yeah. Be friendly. Hands down. Mm -hmm. uh, but not, you can't be friendly every time I'm, I'm a little short fuse well, sometimes i also back to the thing of like when you're not rushing and you're not hangry yeah or like whatever like that the, when you're more clear-headed like that things go more smoothly in general mm. right so like i feel like when stuff gets dicey it's like it's late or we're hungry or yeah. you know something like that. yeah it, it, we're trying to get somewhere yeah we get yeah. we got rushing. pulled over in nicaragua and that was probably our worst uh uh cop Ernesto was so hungry though. In you what? were so totally a hangry combo. I was hang yeah, I was I was hangry. It was late. It was getting dark and we wanted to get to our uh camp, you know, camping spot uh, which we hadn't checked out. So, you know, our we kind of try to get to the place and if it, we didn't like it or it didn't feel good, we just move on to the next thing. But uh but yeah. As I said, I was I was angry <laughs> and it was late and these guys just basically uh, i i wasn't having it that day and mm -hmm. i was a little I, I was rude back to them um yeah just, in your it's not a not a good thing to share because it's like you know, it's we all have our moments <laughs> it's uh yeah yeah <laughs> i had a donut in the car and i was like well do i offer it to the cop or is that like really bad and then <laughs> thankfully he didn't get the ticket. It also gets back in the car. He's hungry, and I was able to offer him the donut. It was kind of yeah. Let's say let's poetic. let's say <laughs> let's say that I threatened the, the the cop and told him that I was gonna follow him and sleep outside his house until he got <laughs> until he got me got me my license uh, driver's license. Could have just offered him a donut, you know. <laughs> okay, and then in Ernesto's defense, though, it is legal in Nicaragua um, for a policeman to take your mm. license yeah. away. Okay. And we didn't know that. And that was very threatening to us at the moment. So there's a lot of things that you kind of learn along the way. It's actually legal for them to do that. Yeah. Interesting. Wild. Yeah. So now, was that an international license or was that your license Washington license. State? Washington State. Okay. <laughs> That's why he's like, I'm going to go to your home. That's sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> that is sketchy. So total, it, total it move, by the way. It, it really just feels that like overlanding is literally problem solving mobily just across international borders. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That sums it up. Yeah. And when you have the time, everything is solvable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I think going back to that, you know, your guys' questions, like the negatives um, can really be minimized, I think, by taking things a little bit slower, uh, having the time to assess the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, just giving time just to, for you to enjoy your, yourself. I think that, <laughs> yeah. See that over there, <laughs> that happened because we had the time during the day to get in trouble. To play, that was kind of almost intentional. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, okay. no, no, we didn't plan to get stuck, but we <laughs> knew that we could get stuck. So, but we, how many hours of daylight we have? So, can, well, if we get, sorry we have, to interrupt, can you explain uh, to the listeners what the picture is that we're looking at <laughs> and how this yeah. came to be? <laughs> that is Costa in Costa Rica, uh, in the Guanacaste Peninsula, or the Nicoya Peninsula. And uh, 
we want to take a shortcut and we were driving, following a convoy of locals, um, mm -hmm. Costa Rica overland. Four by four enthusiasts and overland mm -hmm. enthusiasts. Yeah. Okay. And a certain and, forerunner has uh, has made its way through the mud pit, but not yeah. the back tires. No. Say that again, Ross. It did. It did. With the back tires. Looks like a, a good two thirds of the forerunner made it through the mud, but not the back third that actually matters. Uh, yeah. Well, so that road. So we're looking like we're re looking at the road right here. <laughs> uh, how, how to explain it? Um, Road lane. So yeah, we the truck, the truck is like the, the truck is perpendicular. Oh, the to the road. Oh, wow! And I blocked uh, everybody. Oh, you blocked uh, everybody too. Perpendicular is <laughs> always good. Yeah, it's pretty hot that day. He says sarcastic. Yeah, it was pretty sweaty. Yeah. Um, how did how that um, end up perpendicular? You know, mud does interesting things. And uh, I feel like that's a Top Gear moment where you just kept going with power and it oh, just kept going right around. And yeah. confirm. Yeah. <laughs> I have it was less... pretty deep. It was very, very deep there. Yeah. I, I have fewer digits than I... If I doubled the number of my fingers and toes, then I'd still be less than the number of times when I pull out of mud. So <laughs> I get it. Yeah. It, it was fun. <laughs> But to be fair, I think we used our wrench more often to pull other people out. True. Self recovery matters, though. Like it, that ability. Yeah, Costa Rica so, is another incredible place. Yeah. One, one of the questions we always ask people is like, because there's so many, like when, when people finally, when they first go, they take so much stuff, right? Can you remember things that you're like, I'm throwing this away or I'm shipping this home because we're never going to use it kind of stuff? It's a long list. <laughs> Yeah, we, oh, we no. might be known as severe overpackers in the overland community. Um, yeah. Very heavyweight. We would call City the, our forerunner the heavyweight champion because we really packed it in. Oh. We had to shed a few times. Like embarrassing. Yeah, like kicking our yeah. stuff in the doors. Yeah. 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 We learned, though. You're We're way all, better now. Yeah, we're better now. <laughs> we're still heavy. Well, yeah. Like we on we tried to get like our blow up what is it called the, the uh, inflatable, inflatable paddle boards paddle boards that didn't make it in we brought our scuba gear with us you know yeah like we, fins and masks or like more than that fins mask regulators BCDs, uh everything but the tanks even the weights like, we that's all of it. It's <laughs> Em employ the if you haven't used it in a year you're not going to use it again yeah 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 we learned pretty quick and and we, the, the reason why we did it is because like oh we're going to be saving rather than having to rent all this gear mm -hmm. and gear that you don't trust sure. right especially the the regulator i think it's right important. yeah that's that's small the crux we didn't need to bring everything else no uh definitely not they, the weights <laughs> no the weights oh my god <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, iron's iron in every country, guys. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. if you're using it to hold yourself underwater. <laughs> so, but yeah, we did that. Um, what else? Uh, we couldn't actually fit our inflatable paddle boards, uh, so we end up having to leave them, leave them, you know, leave them here. We packed, I mean, honestly, this isn't that interesting, but we honestly probably packed too much clothing in comparison to our other fellow travelers. Um, I don't know what else. So, yeah. We have a lot of new gear, so that takes up space and, of course, tools and stuff. But. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you didn't get a van. Well, now you have a van, so you can put all that stuff in the van. Yeah, but the van we're not going to take on these. <laughs> Van's amazing. <laughs> the van's for like. Maybe, yeah, just here. The US. The Americas, maybe. Yeah. They could do Southern Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Most of it. Yeah. Um, well, sweet. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the show if you guys are okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. We have no yeah. idea. Thanks for the time. Woo, okay. Yeah, you're doing great on time. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, as always, you can uh, rate and review the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. And then Tasia and Ernesto are at Overland the Americas. 
and then overlandtheamericas.com. And then I'm going to forget the last one. And then it's also evergreenoffroad.com. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the one I forgot to include. I got it there, though, at least. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.